want to say thanks for everyone for tuning in to the second Zoom meeting that we have for the juniors uh, orientation. Um, so I just want to say good evening, everyone. And I know I'm excited for the season to start. Um, tomorrow should be a great day. And then I think we're back in a bit of snow for a few days, but um, golfing in April is always, always good. I remember growing up in Sherwood Park and didn't do a lot of golf until at least May. So April is a great sign for us. So a um, little introduction for myself is my name's Reed Rohatinsky. Uh, I'm a diehard Oilers fan. Go Oilers, win last night, and I can make a mean pierogi. So if you need any, let me know. Um, what else? So yeah, I grew up in Sherwood Park. Um, like most kids, played almost every sport there was out there. Uh, the big sport that I was in when I was really young was uh, gymnastics. I was the youngest competitive male gymnast in Canada in 1984. Um, so that's kind of where my background starts. And then I've played, you name it, sports. I've played hockey, baseball, soccer, basketball, volleyball, swimming. And most of those were um, on the premier side. So it was, I kind of have an idea of, of, of what it takes to, to excel in sports as well as just having fun. I know um, there were some other games that I played that I wasn't so great at, but uh, the friendships that I made through those, I still have some today. So um, not every sport are you going to, you know, make it to the tour on or make it to the, the, the top league. Um, lots of times it's just about having great, great times with your friends. And um, that's kind of what golf started out with for me was my brother um, my two cousins and I made up a great foursome and we were on the golf course every day of all summer long. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's a great sport. I've loved it for a long time. My dad and my grandpa played it and that's who I learned it from. Um, I kind of got into coaching when I was 17 and 18. I, I coached gymnastics at the U of A, um, kind of fell in love with, um, teaching and, and coaching people on, on how to do a certain sport and then went to Grant McEwen. I uh, took the golf program out of there and here I am today. So been doing it for about almost 20 years now. And it's one of my passions. I, I really just like teaching adults and juniors um, the game that I love and looking to pass that on to them. So that's what I'm into. Um, I think lastly, just a few housekeeping items too. Just want to let parents and, and juniors know um, just some of our COVID policies that we have here at the club going on is we're sanitizing every cart and every power cart or push cart. Um, your golf clubs that, that we do take in if we house them for you here. Um, we've talked to AHS quite a bit about us handling your golf clubs and there isn't any real big risk um, for us handling them for you. So hopefully you feel confident in that too. Um, with regards to some of the lesson programs that we're doing, the class sizes have been reduced. Um, normally we can do kind of eight or nine students per, per coach. And we've lowered that to a maximum of six per coach, just so we can give people the space that's needed um, and keep everyone feeling comfortable around each other. Um, the range if you're on the range stall, it's really just for your family. Um, if you are going to meet up with a friend, you will definitely need to, you know, have your own stall. I know we're booking stalls for the near future here still. Um, so if you're meeting a friend for some practice, we'd like you to please book two separate stalls or however many more you need, how many friends you're meeting here. Um, and there's also a, a no guest policy, um, for the time being, just uh, a couple reasons. Number one is just access to the tee or access to the range. Um, we need to leave that available to members only for now. There's Everyone's excited to get out and uh, we've already seen um, our capacity is, is very high. So um, yeah, I think that's enough for me, but uh, I'd like to introduce you to our newest club professional, Matt Keats. Um, He's a great guy. I've only been this year, and uh, I know he's going to bring um, bring a lot of energy to the program. He's one heck of a golfer. He's got a great uh, amateur resume. And uh, take it away, Mac. Yeah. 
So I'm born and raised in Calgary, Alberta here. For you guys who don't know me, my full name's Mackenzie, but I go by Mac. I grew up at Bears Paw Golf Country Club. So I've been around kind of the private golf community majority of my life. Uh, I started at golf at the age of four. So it's never too young to start from four or never too late as well, because I know people who have started later. But a little bit about my junior golf. I played in all those junior programs. I'm sure you juniors have heard of the Sun Junior Tour, the Maple Leaf Junior Tour, the Canadian Junior Golf Association. So if you have any questions about those tournaments or how to sign up, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm more than happy to help you guys. And which ones, if, which, if you don't know where to start, there's also a Calgary Golf Association and Junior Future Link. So if you need any help on that, let me know. I've been around that my basically my whole junior career. And then I ended up moving down to the States and Hawaii and played some junior, I mean, some amateur university golf there for a couple of years. And then from there, I took a year off and finished my college golf in Victoria, where I ended up turning professionally and then joined the CPGA two years ago when I moved back from Calgary and was at Glen Eagles and started teaching juniors and adults and found a new love of growing the game of golf and just being around the golf course and that positive energy everyone has and is happy. It's just something I inspire and like to be part of. So I'm happy to be part of Pinebrook this year and to really help any of you guys out if you need it, if it's with clubs, grips, any swing thoughts or anything you need, just don't hit, go to I'll be more than happy to help you guys. All right. Thanks, Mac. I think it's Ryan next. Yeah, I think we'll pass on to Ryan Carter. He's our he's our junior committee chair. Doc, you there? Yeah, I'm there. I'm just unmute, unmuting. Um, I'll leave most of it to you guys tonight, but just wanted to pop in and say hi and let everyone see my face. And I'm around the course a fair bit. So if you have any questions. Uh, please let me know. The one big thing that we're going to do kind of a little different this year, other than what we're going to talk about tonight, is we're kind of, our, one of my main focuses is trying to work with kind of some fundraising. So one of the first things we've got coming up is a bottle drive. Uh, there'll be more information coming up on that. So um, keep your bottles, you'll get some information on that. That money is going to go to the junior program. Um, we're also going to see if there's some other opportunities for some of the juniors to volunteer at some of these fundraising events and um, create some some fun prizing for them and some kickbacks for them. So uh, that's something to look forward to a little bit this year. More is to come out on that in the next little bit, but something just to keep your kind of ear to the ground on. But otherwise, I'll pass it off to everyone else. But thanks. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, the ball drive is a great idea. I'm looking forward to being a part of that too. I think uh, I think Scott, if you're if you're ready to take over. Yep, I'm ready. I'm here. Okay. <clears throat> okay, guys. Uh, my name's Scott. I'm the coordinator for the junior program this year. Um, this is my fourth season at, at Pinebrook. And I'm very excited to be involved with the program this year. Uh, a little bit of history about myself. Um, I am Australian, but I have lived in Calgary since 2014. Uh, just like Reed, when I was growing up, I played every sport that I possibly could. And uh, anything from cricket to rugby to tennis, soccer, anything at all that I could find someone else to play with me. So... Uh, I didn't start playing golf until I was late, 15 maybe. And that was pretty much because I started getting injured playing rugby. Um, I played on tour for four years from 20, uh, 2008 to 2012. Late 2012, I moved to England to caddy on the European tour. And... Briefly moved back to Australia for a little while, and then I moved to Canada. Um, I am TPI certified level two junior. Uh, TPI is Titleist Performance Institute, for those that don't know. And TPI is at the forefront of golf instruction worldwide. Uh, TPI is at the front of everything so much that 
42 of the top 50 players in the world are instructed by a TPI certified professional. So TPI will be a huge part of the Learn to Compete and the Elite Player Development Program. And then for the Learn to Play and the Fundamentals, it will mostly be Operation 36. Um, I'm also recently just became certified with Operation 36. So I think it's a fantastic program and that's what I'll be covering most of tonight. Okay, so I will share my screen and run through a presentation with you. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the reason why we we at Pinebrook decided to become an Operation 36 facility is because we believe the golf industry has a major problem. The problem is that tradition, the traditional way a junior is introduced to the game is flawed. Right. The main premise when you are beginning to learn to how to play golf is that you must take a group of lessons before you get out on the golf course. And that is what we believe is wrong. Okay. Group of lessons. You're not ready for the course. I'm sure everyone's heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know for a fact I didn't fall in love with golf because I like going to the driving range. I wanted to be out on the course, and we think your kids do too. So the age-old premise that you must take a group of lessons before going onto the course is history. If anyone survives the group of lessons, this is how they introduce the playing golf. They are told to start at the furthest distance from the hole and count how many strokes it takes them to get in, get it into the hole. And this is what it normally looks like. Okay. So they play a few holes of that. It's frustrating. It's overwhelming and there's no plan for improvement. Our solution is the Operation 36 development model, where everyone has the same goal of shooting 36 or better for nine holes. Okay, we start 25 yards away from the hole and you begin developing your putting and your chipping skills. Once you beat 36 for nine holes in division one, which is 25 yards away, you move back to division two which is 50 yards. Okay. And you continue on for 10 divisions all the way back until you reach the tee block. Okay. Some of the benefits that we believe this model has is that it's timely. No matter what your level of play is, you can play nine holes in two hours. Uh -huh. okay. It is goal-centered. Okay, so you, everyone's working towards that goal of shooting 36 for nine holes. And it's very simple to follow. Okay, so the three cores of the Operation 36 development model is, like we mentioned, the on-course playing, the weekly long-term curriculum and end goal, and then technology to motivate and track progress. Technology is given to the students in the in form of an app. And we'll run through that later in this presentation. Okay, so this is how it works. So golfers will play nine holes with the Operation 36 format during our Monday night junior league. 
Everyone will start at Division One, 25 yards. Okay. Shoot 36, you go back to 50. Then 100, then 150, then 200. Okay. And then we can go back to the T box. Okay. We have the option to fast track a student. So if someone comes to us and says, I'm shooting 36 from the JTs. I don't want to start at 25 yards. We have that option to do it. But playing from 25 yards really develops your chipping and putting skills. And if you don't develop those skills as a junior, when you get to 15, 16, 17, you'll get overtaken by someone who spent more time developing those skills than you did. Right. So the, the PGA Tour model, Sorry, the PGA Tour average from 25 yards is 23 shots. Okay, so if you're part of our elite program or play, play to compete program, if you're not shooting around 30 for nine holes from 25 yards, then we know you need to put some work in. Operation 36 has a long-term curriculum and an end goal taught week during weekly small group coaching classes. Okay, you can see them here in blue. The orange dots are our weekly Monday night junior leagues. Okay, in the learn to play, for example, eight week program will be eight one hour sessions included with eight nine hole matches. During the class, the structure is to start out with a team game focused on a certain skill. Then the coach provides instruction on how to improve on that skill. And that at the end of the class, we'll incorporate that new skill into another team game or drill. The weekly curriculum is broken down into 12 skills with six ranks per skill. You can see the skills here on the right-hand side. They are posture, power, grip, ball flight, alignment, green reading, putting, fitness, mastery, honor, work ethic, and the performance part is the playing part. Okay. So the ranks for each of those skills is orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and black. So just like you progress on the golf course, you also progress to a different color. Once you've completed the 12 skills in orange, you then progress onto yellow. You can watch educational videos in the mobile app outside of class to give you a little bit of help with those skills. And then once you've completed those skills in the app, then us coaches will, com will mark it complete for you and you move on to the next stage. So as students are, are these are junior starter kits. So these are optional. Um, you don't have to purchase one of these. Uh, they are an additional $75, but what it is is a bag tag. So every time your child passes a stage or a rank, they'll get a sticker to put on this bag tag to display their hard work to everyone else around the club. It also comes with a divot repair tool, uh, a ball marker, a hat clip, and a couple of tees. And then on the inside is some information for parents and, and the kids. Okay, so as the kids progress through the curriculum, they earn points and can level up their profile by playing golf, practicing, logging social interactions, such as watching golf, you're sitting at home on a Sunday afternoon watching golf with mum and dad. Put it in the app, and you'll get some you'll get some points for it. Okay. Why do we want to get points? Because we have uh, challenges linked to those leaderboards. 
Yeah. So we have a global leaderboard, which is our community or our club as a whole compared to all the other golf clubs around the world that are running an Operation 36 program. And how many in, uh, oh, how many in Calgary? We're the only ones? We are the first, we are the first and only club in Calgary to run Operation 36. We also have a community leaderboard, which is the top three from our club that can contribute to our community points. And then at each class, so the fundamental guys will have a leaderboard, the learn to play guys will have a leaderboard, the play to compete will have a leaderboard, and the elite guys will have a leaderboard. So the more practice you do, the more points you'll gain. So as I mentioned before, you can view the curriculum anytime during a practice session. If you have a question on one of the 12 skills and a coach isn't around to ask, you just whip out your phone, watch a, vi a quick video on there, and I'll explain what, the, what you're trying to achieve. And as, the, as coaches, we can set your child private goals. So if we say little Johnny is struggling with his putting, Okay, we can set little Johnny extra putting goals for that week. So he comes to class the following week and says, yes, I did the activities that you set out for me. And then his putting will be at the same level as everyone else. Yes. Okay. We can also send app, uh, announcements through the app. So weather delays, storm delays, anything like that, instead of, sending an email and hoping that everyone sees it and then probably getting 10 or 20 people that aren't even involved in the program and get, get them an email as well. Yeah. We can send it directly to just the class participants. Okay. So if a learn to play class is delayed because there was a lightning storm, we can send it to just that class only. Okay. This is the activity feed. Okay. This is where we can keep up to date with, with what each child is doing. Students can post pictures of their practice, their play, and highlights like personal best score or leveling, leveling up in the curriculum. You can see other players in our community, what their activity is, and you can like it. You can comment on it. Okay. It's just like Facebook without the annoying ads. Okay. And then we also get to see how much the kids are practicing and playing to hold them accountable for outside of class. Okay. This is very new to Operation 36. It's only come on in the last two months. So it's a junior development model. And this report will show us what kind of track your child is on. Okay. Their track could be recreational, competitor, or maybe they want to go to college on a golf scholarship. And then we can plan their training accordingly. Okay, so as you can see, it's a projected handicap when they graduate from high school. So exploratory track is handicap of 30 and above. So you just want to play social golf. Social track is 20 to 29. So same thing. You want to play a few social rounds a year, maybe a scramble team event for work. Then you got recreational track, which is 10 to 20 handicap when they graduate high school. So they're going to participate in still Operation 36 events because this will progress into a beginner's program. Okay. And then still the same scramble team events. Competitor track are those high school people that want to play in their high school teams. They want to play junior golf tournaments. They want to play PGA Junior League, everything like that. Okay. And then you got college track. So college track is projected zero handicap at age 19. Okay. And they're the people that want to be recruited to play D1 to D3 college, wherever it may be. Okay. So these are our programs so fundamentals package is five to seven year olds we will be incorporating a snag um, into that program 
Learn to Play will be our most popular program this year. So that's for any junior golfer that wants to you know, start learning on course, get out on course, learn the game where it's supposed to be played. Play to Compete package will be those guys that are starting to play tournaments, the Alberta Junior Tours. If you're starting to play those events, then that's the package for you. Now, the difference, main difference between learn to play and play to compete is you get four supervised practice sessions. Okay. It's all well and good if we tell you how you, what you should be doing in a class. But if you don't know how to practice, then improving is going to become very difficult. Okay. And then the elite player package. So the elite player package are the guys that have been playing tournaments for a few years. They want to keep developing their skills to maybe go down the college track. Maybe they want to try their hand professionally, or maybe they want to win a club championship. Okay. It could be any of those things. So as you can see down the bottom left-hand side, those starter kits are there available for $75 each. An additional 45 minute lesson is always available. Okay. And then on the right-hand side are our semester dates and our uh, program dates. So fundamentals is both sessions are on a Saturday. Learn to play both sessions on a Wednesday. You get to pick one or the other on those two programs. Play to compete is two sessions, so Thursday and Saturday. Do not pick one of those days. You are required to come both days. And then the elite guys, they are committed even more. So they get Sunday, Thursday, and Saturday. Okay, And then down the bottom of that page is our Monday night junior league dates. So they're the dates that we'll be running our Operation 36 nine-hole events. Now, when we run a nine-hole event, we and the kid, if, if your child wants to continue on and play 18, absolutely go go for it. Okay, but there are they will only be required to play nine holes as part of our program. Okay. Uh, so just to summarize, Op 36 is centered around on course improvement. Using this program, we will have a long term curriculum and everyone's trying to reach that end goal. And then all the kids get access to technology to uh, motivate them and re report on progress. Okay, so if anyone has any questions, just uh, type them into the text box and uh, myself, Mac, or Reed will do our best to answer them. Yeah, thanks, Scott. That was, that was awesome. No questions so far. I think the one too was uh, the theme for the the fundamentals group would, would be a lot of um, to do with playing a lot of sports, gaining some motor skills. So it's not just going to be hitting golf balls. Is that right? Just to confirm. Right. Right. So, uh, so a big part of TPI is developing an athlete before a golfer. So if a, if a child is not a athlete, chances of them becoming a golfer is, is reduced. Okay, so even though our sessions are um, one hour in length, for those young guys, the fundamentals and sometimes the learn to play guys, they might have a golf club in their hand for less than 20 minutes for the one hour. The rest of the time, they'll be jumping, throwing, hopping, skipping, okay, all the athletic, the fundamental movement skills that is required to play golf. Okay, good. Okay, we got some some questions here. How many students are in each group? Uh, from Devon and Brandon. Okay, so we are going to have six six students per coach. Okay, so if we end up with twenty four students in one class, we will find a way to have a coach there for one one to six ratio. Okay, so we're not limiting our program size. 
yeah. we'll just have to get more coaches to come and help us out. One of the questions about is, are we going to mark the distances on the golf course, 25, 50, 75, et cetera, on okay. Monday? Okay, I will run through that. I'm going to show everyone the app, so okay. I'll run through that in just a second. Oh, so it's going to be GPS tracks. Got GPS, it. GPS, exactly, yeah. Okay, and then uh, someone, someone uh, just quickly asked, too, how many months does the program run? I'm pretty sure it's uh, two semesters of one month each, right? Correct? Or two months, two months, one semester is each month. So two semesters of, right? Yeah, exactly. So if we go back to, so you can see here on the right-hand side. Yeah, let me share my screen. Okay, so on the right-hand side here, semester one will run May 10th to July 3rd. Then we'll have a week break. And then the second semester is July 12th to September 5th. Okay, so I hope that answers that question. Okay, uh, the caddy requirement. Okay, so all kids under 10 years old, and this is club policy, it's not, it's not our decision, uh, require one parent to walk around with the, with, the, with the group. So carts are available for them. They're not expected to walk, but we do encourage it. And uh, it's really just showing the kids where they should be standing, making sure they're quiet when everyone else is hitting. Okay, just showing them the, the etiquette part of, of golf. Okay, Jason says, thanks for bringing it to the club. No pro problem, Jason. Okay, Trent. Uh, so the distances will be uh, able to be viewed through the app. Okay, so let me share my screen again. Two seconds here, guys. My phone went to sleep. Okay. That's not going to work. Okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, Trent, the app has a feature where you can as you're inputting scores, <clears throat> it'll come up with a, a distance on top. So you walk to 25 yards. For the first couple of weeks, we might walk out there and put a marker down okay, if that's requested by enough people. But the app has a really cool feature where you can see how far you are from the, from the green. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Mitty. Okay, so... Okay, uh, next one is Monday League is an Operation 36 and is an additional day. Yes. So the Monday League is just our Junior League night. Okay, so that's their playing component. And then they get a small class on top of that. Okay, so one, one day per week for fundamentals and learn to play two days for play to compete and then three days on top of the league day for the elite people. How many months? I think we covered that one. So one, so two months per semester and there's two semesters per year. Are the junior nights op 36 or regular play? So totally depends on the level of, uh, of golfer. If they're play to, if they've learned to play 
we highly recommend that they do Operation 36. Okay, the reason we say that is when you're learning to ride a bike, you don't jump on the biggest mountain bike you can find. You start small and you have training wheels. Okay, if you learn how to dive into a pool, you're not starting at the 10 meter springboard, you're on the edge of the pool. Okay, just falling in. So start small, build your way up from there. It keeps them engaged, it keeps them enthusiastic, and doesn't, we won't, don't want to break their spirits too early. Do you have to do both junior night and lessons, or can you do lessons without playing junior night? Or can you do junior night without doing lessons? So you can play junior night without doing lessons. You just won't have access to the Operation 36. Okay. And then if you do lessons without playing junior night, then also you're not getting the playing, playing development part of the program. So both of those options are available if that's what you wanted to do. Um, but you're missing out on a huge chunk either way, whichever way you do that. Are there makeup sessions if you miss a class? So if the only time we'll run a makeup class, uh, makeup class is for weather. Okay, so if there's a huge thunderstorm that rolls through at 3 o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon and learn to play is cancelled, we will find find a time to to run a makeup class for that. But if you're away on holidays or something like that, unfortunately, the season's too short to be to be running makeup classes for that reason. Does a seven year old have to go into fundamental snake? Uh, so that's totally that's something that we can we can analyze that in the first few weeks of the of the season. So Trent, I think that um, register in fundamentals then. Yeah, so your little guy, he'll be learned to play. That's that's no problem. Okay. Um, he's got his own set. He's, yeah, he's been out on course before. He knows what to do. So um, fundamentals of for the really small guys that have never played golf before. Uh, the clubs are bigger. We use tennis balls, so they're easier to hit. Okay, all. It's just uh, for someone, for someone like you, a little guy, he'll be fine and learn to play. Perfect, thanks, sir. No problem. Can all thirty-six app be used without the lesson? Then does the app? So the op uh, op thirty-six uh, will not be offered without the lessons. So you have to be part of the program to get access to the app, and the app will not work without a data to plan. But we'll also have scorecards so you don't have to fill out the score on the app okay but on a monday we'll hand out scorecards for the kids to write their score down write their stats down and then we can we can pu uh, put that into the system after the after the round for sure but if you don't have a data plan then you won't be able to view the you won't be able to view the videos on the curriculum but you'll still be able to log your practice and play after the fact. I'm 14 and an experienced golfer, but I've not done a tournament. Which option fits me best? Carter. Uh, <clears throat> Carter, are you looking to get into playing tournaments this year? So play to compete. So you, if you have enough experience where you know know your way around a golf course and now your next step is to play tournaments then play to compete is the program for you hypothetically, i was just going to say hypothetically speaking scott for the data plan for the phone they could view the video if they came into the clubhouse and connected to the wi-fi if they so happen to did have a phone right to view it's just on course they won't be able to access it absolutely yeah wi-fi guess wi-fi will work in the clubhouse um and then there's wi-fi down at the range too isn't there guest wi-fi i uh, don't know if it reaches that far but it's something we can look into um scott i think just to clarify too that um the first few weeks for them on the mondays at least would it would be something that we would be um, 
kind of like hockey evaluations where, hey, you said you wanted to start here. Um, we think that you're better off in, 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 in this section of, you know, right? So the, yep. first, few, the first few Mondays is going to be kind of that evaluation period where we're there with, with the kids and the families talking about uh, where everyone belongs. Yep, for sure. So especially that the Monday, the 10th. So it's not an official junior night, but we'll still run a junior night. So Reed and I will be making our way around the course, um, watching people hit shots. Then we'll go back in and see what, what program they're registered for. And then we'll have a discussion before we move anyone. Okay, we're not going to start throwing around <clears throat> uh, juniors into a into a program that they didn't register for we'll have a discussion first and say okay we believe that your junior is better suited to this program and here's the reasons why if they want to stay in the program that they're in because their friends are in it or something like that that's totally fine okay i've got a couple more questions here is it mandatory for sponsored juniors carl so uh, I'll let Reed answer that one because he's running the sponsored junior program this year. Yeah, no, like Carl, no, no, it's not mandatory. I know you were in the HPC program last year. Um, that's going to be the highest level here on Op 36. Um, so no, it, it's nothing that's mandatory. It's just something that uh, over the... Over the course of the past 12 months, Scott's really been looking into this program heavily. And uh, it's just something that, that we as professionals here at the club believe in. It's just something that, um, you know, other sports, soccer has a smaller field, smaller goalposts. Uh, kids hockey turns the rink sideways. Basketball, the, the net's lower, the ball's smaller. Golf just seems to be the one where um, you're expected to play from 300 yards away and you're trying to get to the par that's almost unattainable. So um, this program is it's for every, every type of junior golfer from the first time you've ever picked up a club to someone such as yourself, Carl, who's played in many tournaments. And um, it's just something that, that we feel is, is great to help grow the game and, and make it more fun for everyone. Yeah, I mean, 25 yards or 50 yards or 75 yards, you're still practicing regardless if you're going or playing from the ladies' tees or the red tees or the back tees. It's all – got to learn how to play from every distance. So this program allows you to learn from the 25 to 50 and to lower your – that's just going to be more beneficial to yourself growing your short game if you really want to lower your scores. Yeah. And, Kyle, like we said before, it's only – nine hole program so play operation 36 distance on the front nine on the back nine go back and win 20 bucks off griff on the back nine yeah. go go back on the tips and play as long as you want okay but operation 36 is just nine holes yeah so like i'm still doing it i'm just that for because i was asking if this is mandatory just like last year for like hpp because like we had that semester program right where you pay the first and second yeah and so i'm more worried about like paying because i'll be here for the first two months but then in july like i'm not like my question really was do i still have to pay that month since i'm a sponsored junior oh no, no. it's highly yeah. encouraged highly encouraged that you guys are part of this okay because the little kids are going to look up to you guys um but no if you're not in if you're not in town we're not going to make you pay for it cool thanks uh, next question is when does junior night start? So the first junior night will be May 10th. Okay. So that's, that will not be an operation 36 uh, date because the programs haven't started yet, but we will still run a junior night on May 10th. Um, yeah. All the leagues are going to be starting that kind of first first week and a half of, of May. Like I think the, the ladies and the men's programs are also starting at that time too. So. Okay. Mike Backus, can you be a part of the junior 
night without being registered in the Opera 36 program. Mike, yes, you can. Uh, you just don't get access to the app. That's the only thing. So you'll just play whatever t box you want, uh, hand your scorecard in at the end. There's no uh, plotting your, your round for points or not part of the community leaderboard or anything like that. So uh, Harrison is registration online. I'm very happy you asked because I'm just about to run through how registration will work this year. Okay, I'll share again. Yeah, so is there any more questions on kind of junior programming while Scott's getting uh, his screen sharing back in? Nothing's popped up. No? Okay. So yeah, now, uh, no questions, but really excited. Yeah, we're excited to in a diff, thanks. Um, yeah, so Scott's gonna run through just for everyone. Um, it'll be how to register for events, um, lesson programs that we just talked about, um, tea times. So just a quick refresher for anyone who might be new or anyone who maybe forgot. Um, we'll just quickly run through how to log in and get set up for that. Okay, so I'll go to the question first. And... Okay, so these are the Operation 36 scorecards, just while I have it up on the screen. Okay, so you can see nine holes. Here's your division. Distances up in your top left-hand corner. Okay, you got your scorecard, whether you hit the green in regulation, how many putts, how many putts inside four feet, and then what your first putt distance is. Okay, so this is why we 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 cry out a a parent out there with the younger kids. Okay, it doesn't have to be down to the exact foot. Okay, a total estimate is is fine. Okay, and then this is how we gauge or how we track how the kids are going when they get out on course. Okay. So I will go to our beautiful website. So first off, I will do Monday night junior league. So this year we will be having through the app, we will have a link, okay? And then the link will take you to our tournament software called Golf Genius, okay? So it will look something like this, okay? As you can see down the left-hand side here, you can see all of the events that are coming up. Okay, so next event is May 10th. So all you, this is all you have to do is hit sign up. I might have to sign back in. I've been sitting here for a while. Okay, sign up and it will say confirm registration. Click okay. You're registered. Okay, it's as simple as that. So this will be on the website in the junior section. You click on the link, it brings you to this page and that's all you need to do. Okay, if there are, if you have requests on tee times or who you wanna play with, there'll be an area where you can send a message to the manager. The manager is myself. And then when I'm doing the draw, I can keep that in mind when I'm making the pairings, okay? If you want to book a tea time, this is for the newer people. So we run a balloting system at Pinebrook. Um, this year we've changed it up a little bit just to make it a little more fair. So once you're on the website, let's go back. Okay, once you're on the website, right in the center of the screen here is book a tea time. So we're going to click on that. And then we're going to find a tea time in the snow on Saturday. Okay. 
we got warned today that our software is running a little slow. Okay. So as you can see here, the this T this T sheet is open for requests until the 22nd okay, at 4 p.m. Okay, so you just go in, you click a time, you hit create request up in the top right hand corner. Okay, so I the number one thing you need to just decide is how many players you're registering okay if you click four but you only register yourself you're going to register yourself with three guests guests are not allowed right now and it's going to come up with an error message okay so i'm going to just i'm going to play with read okay so there's going to be two of us we're going to make one request okay and our our first time that we want to request is in between 12 11 p.m and 102 p.m okay and then time two will be in between 102 and 153 okay but we can't play any later than that because reed has to work that night okay so our third request is going to be 11 20 to 12 11. okay so you put myself in click the box search for the member you're adding as well okay we're gonna take a cart because it's gonna be snowing okay and then you just scroll down if you have any requests for the golf shop golf operations just type it into this box here okay We're gonna try and play with Mike Bosch. Okay, he's already registered, but I can't access his his ballot, so we're just gonna add him in there. Okay, and then the lottery is request is uh, successfully requested. Okay, so you'll get a confirmation email. Okay, and then be, be by noon. Okay, on the on that twenty third, so the day after the request close you will get your what your actual tea time is okay so if the tea sheet's not too busy your tea time will fall in between your first preferred time okay if it's a little bit busy you'll be in the second if it's very busy and you have a low membership category then it will be in that third time slot there okay and then if we are wanting to register for a an event okay so say the junior opening okay so instead of hitting a tea time we're going to hit event registration we're going to go to the junior section okay and then we're going to scroll down you can see here this is the test one that i created today if you go a little bit further we can see this swing into spring is starting on the 2nd of may if we go into May itself, you've got the elite player development, the learn to play, the play to compete, and the fundamentals program. So you can re you can register for all of those programs through this same process. Okay, but as a test, we're going to go back to junior orientate. Uh, sorry, junior opening. Hit view details. So you can see here, it's open for reservations. There's 32 spots available. Okay. I'm going to book for other members because I am not a junior. So it won't let me. Okay. So I'm going to call. Let's do Carl because I was just talking to him. Right. So that, so the events are, are, are so you're saying that uh, I couldn't use my name. I'd have to use my junior's name to book it. Exactly. Yeah. It has to be a junior member's name. It's just, otherwise it won't, won't accept your registration. Okay. And then comments or anything you need to tell us in that box on the right-hand side. Um, and then hit create reservation. Okay. And then Carl will be registered for 
our test event. Okay, you can see there, event reserv reservation added successfully. Okay, so I think that covers all of the website stuff. So if, does anyone have any questions on that? Uh, is the Golf Genius accessible through the Pinebrook app? Uh, it will be. So we are working with our, our app software company to embed it into our app somewhere. Um, we're hoping to have it live for the 27th, which is when the registrations will open. Okay, so just keep an eye on your emails and we'll, we'll communicate that to all the members once it's up and running. Okay, anything else guys? Hey, hey, Scott, I have a question. It's Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Hey, um, I, I know you had covered it. Somebody had asked a question. Um, they have a seven-year-old, whether or not they have to play fundamentals versus um, uh, learn to play. So I was just looking at the age group and it says that learn to play is at um, eight to, eight, is it eight to 10, eight to 12? Uh, learn, learn to play learn. is eight yeah. to 11. Eight to 11. Okay, so if Devin is seven, then yep. I should put him in fundamentals then? Uh, you can start him in fundamentals. And then, you know, if in the first week we say, okay, you're a little more advanced than what this program is, then we can shift him up. Okay, we'll contact you beforehand and ask you if that's okay, because of course they're going to be on different days and at different times. Right. So we have to make sure it suits you. Okay. Um, but something like that where they're only a year apart, yeah. it, 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 it's hit or miss. You know, it's 50 50 chance of being in the right program. If you think he's advanced for a seven year old, put him in the learn to play. Okay. If you think he's a, a little bit behind, you know, an eight to 11 year old, and you think an extra year in the fundamentals will help, then, uh, then put him in the, in the fundamentals. Okay, so I guess um, you guys have the swing to, uh, I don't know what's called, swing into spring. Swing into spring, yeah. Yeah, so that kind of overlaps as well, right? The timing of that versus the fundamentals? Uh, no, it won't. So that finish, uh, yes, it will, sorry, it will. Okay, so it doesn't make sense that I, I, because I initially registered him into that swing into spring and then was also going to put him into Operation 36. So does it make sense to be in both? Uh, so totally different programs. Swing into spring won't have the long-term development. Swing into spring is more of a beginner's class. So the fundamentals of golf, grip, stance, swing, uh, full swing, putting, that's pretty much all we'll cover in the four weeks. Um, and a lot of it will be the, the fundamental sports skills, like Reed and I were discussing before. So okay. the the skipping, the jumping, the throwing, okay, making sure that they can do those activities before we even put a club in their, in their hand. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Cause thinking, yeah. Cause I was thinking like, I wonder if, you know, it was, I was going to put Devin in the swing into spring and then maybe have you guys evaluate to see, you know, which, which operation 36 course he would be more suitable for. Yeah. I mean, you, you can try one week in the swing into spring. And then if we say, Hey, not going to learn much here. We can put him up into the, into the learn to play or the fundamentals. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Sam Cook. Hey, Sam. Uh, can I change levels as I progress? Absolutely. Okay. So if you start off learn to play and in six weeks of the eight week program, you're absolutely killing it. And your division six or seven in the operation 36 on course program then absolutely we can move you up to, to play to compete. Okay. So that's, that's part of the, going back to what Sam was saying, that's why we can, we'd love to see the juniors track their practice and their playing. And so we can make sure that the, A, they're putting the work in and B, they're getting their results so that we can either change the, the uh, training that they're getting within the group lessons, or we can you know, give them a little 
a little nudge and say, hey, you're not you're not putting in the work outside of class. So that's why you're not seeing the results. So if you want to if you want to develop throughout the program, then you got to put more work in. Okay. Anything else? That's all I have to cover. So uh, Operation 36, very exciting for us. Um, we are looking forward to staying engaged and interacting with the juniors through the app. Um, if anyone has any questions about that, uh, just reach out to me on, on email. Okay. I haven't been around the club much lately, but um, I'm back tomorrow, so if you see me, pull me aside and ask me anything you want. Perfect. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Thanks for everyone for joining up and coming to the Zoom meeting. I know it's going to be an exciting year, so thanks for tuning in. And we'll see everyone around the golf club. Absolutely. Oh, uh, I just got one more thing. Yeah. One more thing. Okay. Uh, as the program's get closer to the start date i will start adding the juniors onto the app so you will see a invitation come from operation 36 um, if two or three days before your program is going to start you still don't have a an invitation check your junk mail and if it's still not there reach out to me okay uh, it'll walk you through how to register how to download the app what you need to do um, it's very simple, and then uh, we'll cover we'll cover the app in more depth uh, during our first few classes. Okay, so look out for that email, and uh, hope to see everyone soon. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Scott. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good night, everyone. Yeah. Have a good night. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, thanks Scott. I do have a question. Now, what is the average age of the of the players? Uh, I don't know. Reed ran the program last year, so he's yeah um, going off registrations from this year. I'd say at nine to a nine to twelve. So far, yeah. we're hoping yeah. we see more registrations after tonight. Though. Yeah, I think especially in the in the first three groups, like the the fundamentals, the learn to play and play to compete. Uh, yeah, I would say it was, yeah, from about eight, nine to about 12, 13. And then, you know, in order to get into that, uh, that three days a week group, I'd, I'd say those, those kids were probably 14, 15, 16. Um, they were just a bit older. They had, they had done golf for a bunch of years already. So. Okay. My girls are, um, my youngest is 14. So, um, we will talk cause I would like her to play and just meet some other juniors, even if yeah. it was one of the fundamental programs. Yeah, by all means. And, and like Scott was saying, we're hoping that, you know, maybe word gets around what we're, what we're going to do this year. And I remember last year it was kind of the same thing. It started off pretty slow. And then after the first few weeks of the classes that we were doing, just word of mouth got around and then, I, we almost had to turn, turn we started turning people away because we just didn't have enough coaches <laughs> well we so, had nothing else to do so the golf course was a bit of a reprieve for everybody yeah and it, you know this year might be the same so okay well those are all my questions great presentation tonight thank you ah thanks, you're welcome okay. thanks Laura bye bye yeah nice work Scott thanks man you're awesome yeah really great